Hey, it's Jeremy with Tech Creation coming at you in 4K. I'm now shooting with the Panasonic GH4 with a Lumix 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens that's attached to the camera right now, and a 25 millimeter f1.8 lens by Olympus that I'll be using to capture shots of my products, so on and so forth. Anyway, all right, so this video is geared towards the many Android smartphone users out there who own a smartphone and don't know a single thing about it. Or maybe for those of you who are just wondering, hey, I wonder what else can my Android phone or tablet do? So here are five things that you probably didn't know your Android device is capable of doing. Let's check it out. So if you're like me and happen to own an Android smartphone, such as the Galaxy S6 that doesn't have any micro SD card slot expansion, then no worries. If you go ahead and purchase one of these, for 13 bucks on Amazon, I'll drop a link below. You can unlock those capabilities. Well, sort of. See, this is a multi-function micro USB two card reader adapter made by iCross. What this does, it enables you to pop in your external storage into one of these slots and then plug the micro USB tip into your Android smartphone. There's several options here, a USB 2.0 port, SD card slot, a micro SD card slot, MS Pro and M2 card slots, which the last two that I mentioned are just other types of media. For demonstration, I'll connect my thumb drive and my SD card into the adapter, plug it in my phone, and the phone's native file system should pop up, giving me the ability to copy to and from my phone. Now, in order to read your thumb drive, you need to slide this switch over to the USB and vice versa for the other slots. There's many variations of this type of product, which I'll also leave links to down below. Now, of course, this doesn't entirely solve the problem because you're not going to be walking around with this attached to your phone all day, but you'd be surprised of how useful it is. For instance, if you saw my GoPro Hero 4 review, I shot the intro from my phone and the files were shot in 4K, so they were large. And I wasn't going to use any wireless method to transfer the file and the wired connection from Android to Mac isn't exactly always reliable and requires some third-party software. So I used this and everything went smooth. It's crazy useful and I can't see why any Android user would not have something like this in their arsenal. Okay, now for number two, plugging an ethernet cable into your tablet for high-speed internet. So piggybacking off the first method, this is an OTG or on-the-go cable and works the same way. But instead, we'll be using this with this plug and play ethernet to USB cable. That works on MacBooks, Chromebooks, Windows, and of course, Android tablets. So we attach this to the OTG cable, plug in your ethernet into this port, and voila, no software needed. You now have high speed internet on your Android tablet. This works with most modern tablets with an ASICS AX88772 chipset. A quick Google search of specs will tell you if your Android tablet is compatible or not. Again, there's many variations of this plug and play ethernet cable, which I'll also leave links to below. Now on to number three, using your Android smartphone or tablet as an external monitor for your Canon or Panasonic DSLR camera. So if you have a Canon DSLR and the ever so useful OTG cable, then you're halfway there. You also need a USB 2.0 cable if you happen to have one lying around the house. Set those aside and download DSLR controller from the Play Store for $7.99. But there's also a free one called DSLR Dashboard. But it's not as polished. They function the same way nonetheless. So once you've downloaded either or, plug your USB 2.0 cable into the audio video out on your Canon DSLR camera and then daisy chain it to the OTG cable like this. Then you plug that right into your tablet. Fire up your camera and then launch either app that you chose to use. And you should immediately see a live feed from your camera on your smartphone or tablet. You now have remote access to your camera, which allows you to control all the camera settings, hit record, and even adjust the autofocus. Now for you Panasonic DSLR users with Wi-Fi compatible cameras, you guys will need to download the Panasonic Image app. It's free on the Play Store and it works just like the DSLR controller. 
Once installed, head to your camera's menu and find the Wi-Fi settings. Once you're in there, go to Wi-Fi function, select new connection, remote control. You'll then see your camera's connection information such as the Wi-Fi name and the QR code. Then go into the image app on your smartphone or tablet and select Wi-Fi or QR code. If you select Wi-Fi, connect to the Wi-Fi name that was displayed on the previous screen. If you select QR, you'll align your camera to the QR code to connect. Or if you want to get fancy, if your Android smartphone has NFC and your Panasonic camera has NFC, look for the NFC icon on the body of the camera and tap the back of your phone to the camera. You'll then hear a connection noise and then you're all set up. This capability is crazy convenient and could save you hundreds of dollars from purchasing an external monitor. This one is for all smartphone platforms, using your Android smartphone or tablet as a wireless mouse for your Mac or PC. Say for whatever reason you have a computer with no mouse. If you download the remote mouse app from the Play Store, your phone can become your mouse. Once downloaded on your Mac or PC, visit remotemouse.net and download and install the remote mouse server. Once that's done, make sure your Mac or PC is connected to the same Wi-Fi as your Android smartphone or tablet, and then open the remote mouse app, choose the computer to connect to, and then you can begin using your mouse. And the last but not least, control your TV, cable box, Apple TV, DVD, Blu-ray player, etc. If your phone is one of many that features an IR blaster, then you're in luck. If you're not sure, then I'll leave a list in the description of all the phones that currently have an IR blaster built in. This is one of the most underrated features of smartphones today and one that I happen to use a lot. So if your phone didn't come with a remote app, which it should have anyway, but in case it didn't, then you want to download the Peel Smart Remote from the Google Play Store. It's free. Once installed, the setup is straightforward. You want to go to your settings, select add room, name the room, enter your zip code so the app can search for service providers in your area, select your TV brand to get your TV set up, and then the app generates a code for you to test out to see if your television turns on or off through the touchscreen power button. It's usually always right the first time. The same procedure is with your cable, DVD, Blu-ray player, etc. Having an IR blaster built into your smartphone or tablet simplifies life that much more. It's super convenient in countless number of ways. That wraps it up for this video. I hope this information was helpful. I think it's important that people know what their phone is capable of doing. Otherwise, why buy an $800 smartphone just to talk on the phone, right? You might as well just buy a flip phone. Anyway, feel free to drop a comment to let me know which one of these was the most useful to you. Or if you know much cooler tricks, just leave a comment for the other viewers watching, as I'm sure they appreciate it. Anyways, if you like this video, as always, thumbs up, subscribe for weekly content, and be sure to follow me on social media, because in the very near, near future, I will be doing a giveaway, so stay tuned for that. Alright, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.